Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Astroneer. I'm Joe Mama, your host. It is episode six. So, you can hear the wind blowing. Holy cow, you can really hear that wind blowing. So I just want to show you, a lot of work has been done on this base. I've done a lot of work off camera and made a few interesting discoveries. I'm sure all, maybe some of you out there have been screaming at me like, dang it, Eric, why are you not doing this? And my goodness, if I were in your position, I would be screaming at me too. So let's take a look. First of all, I cleaned this area up something fierce. Notice all the pallets. Okay, so I'm an engineer by trade. I've been on work sites. I'm going to call those medium, tra uh, those medium storage solutions, these things right here. Hey, where's my cursor? Right there. I'm going to call these pallets, okay? So just get used to that. So all the pallets are gone. Where'd they go? Well, I'll show you. So I found a much better way to do storage, a much better solution for storage. So first of all, I started... I discovered these medium resource canisters. Okay, great. Well, that knocks one sound source down. Great. How much science do we have? 7,000 science. Great. Okay, so I built these, a bunch of these medium resource canisters. And what you can do is, let's see, is there any that's like slightly full? If I take, okay, like this one right here. Okay, there's, there's room here. So if I take these, if I find, if I find a resource such as carbon and I plop it right here, it goes right into the container. And notice the container can hold up to 32 units, which are uh, nuggets. That's what those things are called. They're called nuggets. These little things right here that attach to these little sockets are called nuggets. Now, if I add another one, it goes up to 31. I mean, obviously. But, but the important thing to note here is that is a nugget that using these regular pallets that I've been using, and when you put them on a socket like this, that double socket, which is, I think it's a medium socket, we'll call them sockets. Uh, this one dot is a small socket, four dots is large, and then eight dots is extra large. So these medium transports, or these medium uh, storage solutions here, these pallets hold eight nuggets. Okay, now they can hold eight nuggets of any type, but they still only hold eight. And if you've got a whole crap ton of a particular resource like carbon, you get carbon out the wazoo, this can hold up to 32 units of a single resource. Okay, so that means if you have like, look, look at all these exo chips. I don't know if I could put an exo chip into these things. I don't know. I'll have to try that. But in any case, um, oh, and same with these gas canisters, these, uh, medium gas canisters. This holds up to, what does it say? Uh, holds up to 32 small canisters of a single atmospheric resource. So just like, just like, um, these things hold 32 of a solid resource, these hold 32 of a gas. So that's kind of cool. But in any case, so I decided that, you know what, this would be really cool if I could just set these things out and okay, they've got two modes. It says disable output or enable output. So if I swap between F and uh, what it will do, if I if I hit F, it disables the output, meaning everything stays inside and nothing pops out here to be grabbed. But I want them enabled right now. So let's go ahead and enable it. Now, once I discovered this and realized, oh man, I could put all my high volume stuff, the stuff that I use a ton of, I can put them in these things and it takes up so much less space. So all of these, I just went around and started filling up these resources. The thing is, I realize now that I probably could have saved space and just gotten away with um, putting unrefined resources in here, you know, instead of doing the refined. And then as I need to refine them, I can go right over there to the smelter and smelt them. But you know what, whatever. So I've got some that are refined, some that aren't refined. Very cool. But I set these things up and then I set it for enable output so that there's uh, one ready to be grabbed like the, um, 
like the first tissue in a box of Kleenex, right? Now, the only problem with that is once I built these, I thought, oh yeah, that's great. Now I just gotta organize them a little better because right now they're just sitting freely on the ground. So I built these extra large platforms right here. And the only problem there is, watch what happens. Okay, well, let me enable the output on that one. Okay, so watch what happens if I do that. So I, let's see, I'll pull two of these out and then I put this here and the output is enabled. Watch what happens. Oh, see, yeah, nope, 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 nope. It was <laughs> any empty space on the system, it will try to fill. And I don't want it to do that. I really don't want it to do that. So um, I have to keep them loose on the ground, isolated from other systems, or I can disable it and just hit, just hit F and disable it. I could do that, but I, I really like having them r there to, uh, to be grabbed. I think that's very cool. If there's any devs out there listening to this, I mean, Factorio has a nice little solution. It, they have active provider chests and passive provider chests. So maybe there could be like a third mode. There could be output disabled, output enabled, passive, output enabled, active. When, with the active provider chests, they try to put their contents, they put it out into the uh, into the logistic system. Uh, they, they make a very concerted effort to put their stuff out there, like it will automatically deliver to uh, chests that are asking for it. And in, it, the same goes for this. That seems to be the mode that this is on. As long as there's an empty socket, this thing will try to fill it if it's in the same system. And I don't really want that. What if we did like a passive provider mode where it sits just like this, pops out, ready to be grabbed, but it's not going to provide it to every single empty socket. You know, so that's what I ended up doing. I ended up putting these things on these empty spots right there. And it every every canister tried to output to any empty sockets that weren't filled. So anyway, that's one disadvantage. So I have to pull them off and let them sit like this. But I mean, look at that. Like that holds 32 resin right now. And as I need it, I pull it out. And then if I don't, if, I, if I'm running out, then I just, you know, disable the output put it on the train and we'll go mining, you know, we'll go mining for more. So, you know, there's a thought. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. Plus I've just kind of neatened everything up, put all the uh, processing in a line. Okay, all the little processing uh, machines I've put kind of all in a line. So everything can be done right here and then we got the printers right over here. We got the large, the medium, and the small. So we're getting a real base here. So that's very cool. It's one of the neatest, one of the most organized bases I've ever done. And um, I've started pulling some stuff out of the ground as well. So these special mushrooms I uh, brought over here and I'm set, I set this up here as a sacrificial piece of dirt to be blown up. These things, they can be they can be deconstructed with explosives or recycled into scrap, but we can deconstruct them with explosives and actually get some decent materials out of them, like uh, like astronium. I mean, that's some really good stuff. But the only disadvantage is it you have to actually place the explosive on it to destroy it. You can't, it can't be in proximity, in close proximity, as it can be with the uh, with the exocaches, the pelican cases. So. That's something to be aware of. All right, so anyway, now that I've shown you where we're at on this base, let's take a look at what missions we have ahead of us. And I'll let you know my thoughts. So I've got this loaded up with a few important stuff that I think we could need. So this is what I'm thinking the first mission's gonna be. We're gonna go to Kalidor and we're gonna find some shells because a lot can be gained. There is a, um, a great advantage that can be gained if we complete this mission. Again, it was something that, you know, I said it was Bill Adams, but it's not Bill Adams. I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, it, it was another guy who brought it up that, no, no, wasn't it Bill Adams that said this? It was Bill Adams that said this, that pointed out that he does not, he tends to not use these things because like I said, they hand them out like candy. They're pretty overpowered. And one of the things he did mention is the little creatures in the, the gastropods. Every time it says G, like G, Calidor. It's gastropod, Calidor. 
the gastropods give advantages, and this one on Kalidor gives an extremely good advantage, a, an exceptionally good one, and that is that it produces oxygen for you if you feed it a seed. So, and if you feed it the right kind of seed, it will give you oxygen for even longer. I don't remember what kind of seed that is, but there's obvious advantages to that. So we could disconnect from the tether and do some serious exploring, like 20 minutes worth of exploring, 20 IRL minutes of just walking around without having to worry about the tether. And if we realize that we've overextended ourselves, like, oh, we're gonna be out for more than 20 minutes, eat another seed. So even if it's not the right seed, you can still get like, I wanna say five or 10 minutes of oxygen by doing that and then you just, just keep eating seeds until you get to safety which is a whole lot better than you know trying to last on what's in your tank so we want that and we can get a lot of usefulness out of that and before we do any more surfing to the core where we disconnect ourselves from the oxygen for an extended period of time will we will want to complete that set of missions also ingenuity Place a rail engine on the logistics depot at Glacio. We're gonna do that. I think we'll do that this episode. So without further ado, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and hop on the transport and get over to Calador and see if we can get started on that. See if we can get this mission up and running. I'm bringing, uh, I think Calador has a lot of uh, wind power. I think we can get a lot of wind power in Calador. Plus, I'm bringing this pallet full of um, full of QTGs, and uh, I've got six there, plus a seventh on my backpack. And um, I think there might be an eighth one on Calador attached to the buggy. I can't remember, but I pr I'm almost positive we left one on Calador. So we should be good, plenty of launches, so no need to refuel. Uh, you know what I would like to do? Let us build one, let's, oh, oh yeah, and I took all the pallets, all those pallets, I used packagers and packaged them all. And so now they're here, ready to be stored. I'm half tempted to bring a pallet of them. Uh, to Calador with us since we have the space. But what I want to do is I want to create um, at least one of these resource canisters for a resource that we're going to get on Calador, which is Wolframite. And we need plastic and glass. And in order to make plastic and glass, we need how much compound? We got 28 compounds. Let's grab a compound. Let us grab a carbon. Go over to the chemistry set. Let's make plastic. Okay, let's make plastic. And, uh, do we have any glass that's not, yeah, right there, we got some glass. All right, good. And there's our plastic. And I think we can go here. Medium resource canister, you can see I've been, I've been using it. And we'll have that made. And while that's being constructed, let's go ahead and grab, let's see, maybe four. Actually, you know what I really need is packagers. Here, yeah, this is what I'll do. Okay, first of all, let's grab this, which is in a little package. And we'll grab this pallet and we'll remove some of this stuff that's on it. And then one, two. We'll grab two packagers, I think, just because they're useful. And the resource canister. And we'll go ahead and put this on the rocket. All right, let's go. Now it should be easy enough to find our base because we put a launch pad there, did we not? Yes, we did. Beautiful. Yep, sure enough, there's the buggy with the QTG R QTRTG attached to it. All right, so let's think about what we want to do here. We will rig ourselves up for, we'll get some tethers and we're gonna rig ourselves up for going underground because I think that's where the shells are. We're gonna look for the shells. That's our next step. 
Oh, we also have a platform here. Let's go ahead and set that up. I had uh, packaged this. I don't remember why. <clears throat> and yes, we get oxygen from that. Fantastic. And I think we'll put this. We'll set that up. That's going to be wind power. And then I think we've got some tethers. I just put them on. Did I not? Yes, I did. So let's see if we can head underground. Let's see if we can operate from the buggy. There's a cave right here. Let's see what we can find. Are these tethers, will they go right to the... Yeah. They will, right? Will they not attach to the buggy? No, I guess they won't. Okay. So we would need an oxygenator in order to do that. That's fine. Well, let's see what we can find. Oh, you know what? I think I see... Is that a shell right there? No, that's not. Okay. Now, this is the surfing thing I was talking about. <laughs> let's see if we can do it. Like that. Look at this. Look at that. Tell me that isn't freaking awesome. And I could have just kept going, but I stopped. Okay, look at that. There's a shell. Okay, so that's one. So now we know what they look like. Let's see if we can find more. And as I seem to remember, they are attached to these... Uh, to these stalks that stick out of the ground. Look like stalagmites. So let's see if we can find four more. We've got a good source of oxygen. Okay, what does that... It looks like wolframite, maybe? Yep, there's a couple of shells right there. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Yes. And there's the, there's the last one we need right there. Okay, so we got our Kalidor shell, so now let's go see if we can find... See if we can get back to where we were, because now we're going to have to go back up to the uh, to the launch pad. Fantastic! Not a not a terrible way to start the episode. Although I guess 20 minutes in, well, 20 minutes unedited, we're not exactly just starting, are we? But you see how the surfing technique works. That is bloody cool. And I also, I didn't tell you this, but I went ahead and I installed the drill, th the drilling three mod. So we've got a nice powerful drill attached to our terrain tool. I'll show you here in just a minute. Oh, we need the small horn. I forgot the small horn. We should have grabbed that. <sighs> okay, so here is the mod right here. The Drill 3 mod, and this thing will cut through just about any terrain with uh, relative ease. Alright, so what does that give us? Should give us empty terrarium, alright? Am I right? Yep, there we go. So we gotta provide it with soil, provide it with tungsten, and provide the terrarium with a dagger root seed. Well, guess what? We can go get a dagger root seed right now. And then we're gonna have to go back to, uh, to Silva. Oh, and you, sometimes you get these little squiggly looking things that look like a s couple of snakes getting it on. Um, that's, sci that's a scientific item you can research. So let's actually, oh, backpack is now full, because of course it is. Um, is there anything we can scrap? No, we're just gonna carry a dagger root seed. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. All of our soil containers can now go here. Don't need them for the time being. So what we're going to do is we are going to go get tungsten. Wait a second. We no, we, we'd have to smelt it. We would need we need tungsten. So we're going to have to go. Let's OK, let's take a close look at the mission to make sure we don't have to go back. The only thing is we are going to have to go back once we catch this little guy. Uh, because... Let's see, tracking... Oh, those are all stuff we finished. Okay. Okay, terrarium with soil, with tungsten, dagger root seed. We've got the seed. 
Oh, no, the seed is still attached here, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna grab that. We are gonna grab a container of soil, and we have to go get the tungsten. All right, so we'll meet you back on Silva. Okay, I don't know that tungsten is one of the items that I put in these containers. However, I had a limited amount, and there's one right there. So tungsten, soil, and we'll grab the horn while we're at it, right? Okay, so there's that. Soil. Okay, tungsten. It did say tungsten, right? I thought it said tungsten. Dagger root seed. Okay, what am I missing here? Provide terrarium with soil, provide terrarium with tungsten, provide terrarium with dagger root seed. Oh, you know what? Maybe I have to do it on the planet. You know, I might have to do it on the planet. It's really materials needed for the prop. Okay, so we also need to grab the horn. So we'll do that on the planet. And let's put one canister of fuel in here because I think we're close to out. Yep. All right. Now, if the core were unlocked on this planet, if this planet were unlocked, we would not have to be using fuel to do this. We could just fast travel between the planets. One of the benefits. All right, exit. All right, so now that I've got this, let's see, put that there. Why is it not working? Oh, okay, I'm looking at the wrong one. I gotta provide this with copper and wheezeweed seed. Oh, good lord. Okay, I was filling it for the wrong one. Um, I still don't know why I didn't accept it. Why did, oh, because this one is specifically for Kalidor. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong one. So we've gotta find a wheezeweed seed and copper. Or we gotta go back to um, Silva. But I need to figure out what is a Weezweed seed. I don't remember. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Got it, got it. Okay, let's go around looking for that. We have seen those around. In fact, I think we're looking at one right there. Okay, Weezweed seed, got it. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. I knew something wasn't right. It's like, wait a second. Okay, copper. Um, you know what? We might as well figure out what we need to do to get things up and running on this planet. Small printer. Resin, so we're gonna need some resin, which there's plenty of around. We're gonna need a smelter on this planet anyway. We might as well go ahead and set it up. All right, uh, medium printer. And for that, we're probably going to need compound. Yep, okay. All right, so this will go there. And for this, we need a smelter, smelting furnace, resin, and compound. Okay, smelting furnace, and then we're gonna have to make a large platform, which means three more resin. I don't necessarily like to crap where we eat, but I need the materials, so I guess I'll mine close to the base. Okay, so we're gonna do this, we're gonna do a platform, and then we can get copper down in the mines. Which, one, once we get this thing starting to set up the platform, oh, yeah, that's, oh, you know what we do then? Pull that. Put that there. 
once we get the platform going, then we'll uh, we'll head out and um, we'll go get some copper. We'll go get some um, malachite. Although, let me see. Uh, let's actually grab one of those. There we go. Whoa, that was close. Okay, more over here? Yes. Some more. Okay, malachite. So that's our copper. Good enough for me. Just need the one. And we've got the wheeze root seed, or the wheeze wheeze weed. Not the wheeze root, wheeze weed. These are all steps we needed to take to get this base up and running, so not really gonna complain about it too badly. And now where's the other pallet of windy stuff? Okay, we'll put that right there. Add some more power to it. Put the malachite on there. Turn that sucker on. And we should have everything we need now. One hopes, doesn't one. There we go, that's more like it. And where's the wheeze roots, the wheeze weed seed? Boom. Beautiful. So we got that, that's completed. What's it gonna give us? Okay, just gives us some bites, all right. So now, uh, where is it at? It's going to give us a new mission. Recovery, attach a small horn, which we've got. Perform proper emotes. Yes, okay, which we know. And there he is. All right, so let's go... Okay, now we hit G, and let's try number seven. Oh, he likes that. Number seven, excellent, okay. Where'd he go? Oh, he's over there, okay, let's grab. Let's grab that. If we do this. Okay, so let's, um, G, number seven. Oh, he's gonna go somewhere else now, right? Over there, okay. Sometimes that happens. Come on, buddy, I ain't got oxygen to do this all day. Okay, G, seven. He's loving that. Hit F to befriend, there we go. Okay, so that puts him in there. Let's get back to the base, and now we're actually gonna have to verify him. So we're gonna go back to Silva, back to our special laboratory. Let's see, what does this give us? F, okay, reclaimable, complete. Okay, no rewards are, okay, I guess we're not collecting any rewards just yet. All right, fine. Um, Let's go back to Silva. We knew that was gonna happen. I'm not entirely sure this step is absolutely necessary to get the benefits of having this creature in our possession. If that's a thing you can do. Um, however, let's, we, let's at least get the mission complete, you know? Just, just thinking, I hope I remembered to put him on the, yep, he's there, okay, good. So let's go to the lab, and then, nothing's gonna happen to him, he's just getting scanned. So he has been verified, excellent. So we go back to our launch pad to find out what that garnered for us. Okay, verified, so we collect the bites. Okay. Okay, so what that does, and now, 
Oh, we didn't pick him up. Okay. Ah, oh, we left him there, didn't we? He's still attached to the wall. Let's grab him. Okay, it says right here, passively produces oxygen that fills tanks and tether networks. So, okay, he likes the spiny Attica seed. Okay. That's his preferred seed. So now that we've gotten that thing, we're gonna do one more thing. Well, first we'll go to, we're, we'll go to, uh, do we need to go to Kalidor for any, yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna go to Kalidor, back to Kalidor, and we're gonna pick up some of the materials we brought. So we're not gonna need them. We're not gonna need all the materials that are there, there, but we'll take some back with us because we're gonna go to Glacio next. So what is this thing right here? Spine Lily, Spiny Atticus. Okay, that might have been the thing that shoots stuff at us. That might have been the, the uh, little projectile looking plant, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is get rid of one of these oxygen tanks and let's get rid of this compound. Let's get rid of this horn. We don't need this at the moment. Uh, hydrazine, we're gonna end up needing that. Um, we are going to grab... Oh, you know what we're also gonna do? We're gonna take that. Take it off the buggy. Because basically anywhere we go, we're gonna bring this power pallet with us. And I also know that Glacio has a massive wind source, so we're gonna take that also. Anything else... Um, this is our, basically, this pallet just gonna, gonna go with us to different places. Alright. And... I am okay leaving... Let's see, hang on. Let me grab that soil container. I'm okay leaving this here. Because that's what we brought it for. Yeah, this, this is what we brought this for. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead... Uh, no, I'm not going to un undo that just yet, because that's going to be specifically for Wolframite. When we find Wolframite, we'll put it in that container. All right, now we should be running out of oxygen right now, are we? Yes, we are, but if we take the seed right here, plop this in. You know what? Let's actually move these so we can see this better. Okay, we see our little guy up there. Let's uh, take this seed, plop it in the top, even though it's not the seed that he prefers. Mm -hmm. He still likes it, but look, it refills our oxygen. And that will last, and if you look, you'll see, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a timer. You will see this, this uh, ring around, uh, in fact, you could just see it start to be consumed right here. Um, this blue ring will slowly turn black, and that tells you how long your oxygen, your unlimited oxygen supply is going to last. Once the whole thing turns black, he's no longer happy or in an extra happy state and he's not gonna passively produce oxygen. But that's basically a timer of how long your unlimited oxygen lasts. So I think it was Bill Adams that mentioned he tries to play his games without that, without using this, which is an admirable thing to do. For this case though, to show you the game, we'll use it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's in the game, in vanilla, we'll use it. So anyway, yeah, so we've got unlimited oxygen, no tethers, but that frees us up to do a lot of exploring, and it certainly frees us up to surf our way to the core, does it not? Especially if we can find seeds along the way, which we know we can. So the next stop, the last stop for the day, for this episode, we wasted a lot of time here doing things we didn't need to do. Okay, let's pop that hydrazine to go ahead and top off our fuel. We brought our pioneer packs with us. This pallet can stay. And I think pretty much everything here, the tethers, I mean, pff, they can stay for now. I, if you have ra a rail system and this little guy, you almost don't need tethers. There's, they can still be useful, but only just. Okay, so off to Glacio we go. Now I'm pretty sure I left the contents. I think I left a locomotive on the planet just for this reason. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. 
and I've wasted even more time, but I'm pretty sure we've got everything we need to get the rewards for this next mission. Yeah, I think we did. Okay, uh, let's take, let's take our wind pack, let's take our QTGRGFYZPDQ thing. Yep, there's the locomotive. Excellent. All right, let's put these two things in place. And did I already set up the shredder? Yes, I did. I set up the massive shredder and the uh, and the platform here, and you will see why. Okay, it's acting like there's something here for us. I don't know what. I uh, don't know what. Complete rewards? Any rewards? No? There we go. And then I think we get a couple of railroad cars, right? Yeah, uh, two rail cars and some bites. And I think that's actually going to give us a new mission as well. Okay, what's this? Examine. Use prints to update the compass. Pylons detected. We're going to do that. Okay, and this one. Come on, get in there. Why, why you know, why you know do this? Why you know do this? Okay. Let's get this out of here a little ways. And let's see if now it'll work. Maybe? Yep, okay. So, we've put those cars in place. Let's see what we just completed. Use the data log and logistics glacio to update compass. I had a feeling it was going to have us do something like that. So we get a work light, drill mod three. Oh, jeez, are you kidding me? And an oxygen tank times one. None of which we really need. <laughs> All right, so the work light, I like to attach to the train right there. The drill mod three. We've already got that, to be honest. Um... I'll put that right there. And then an oxygen tank. Um, I'll put that with our Pioneer pack, I suppose. Okay, we'll put that right there. Okay, so... Uh, now why is this thing telling us we got a thing? What's this telling us? Okay, no, it's just, it's just a, a, a glitch. Okay, um, let's take a look and see what it says. What are the next mission sightings? Connect the rail line to a site pylon. So we will find site pylons, which you'll see what they are. We haven't run into one yet. Uh, anything else? No. Okay, basically this explains how they work. But I want to show you something. I've already hooked this up. Oops, okay. Yep, that, uh, that almost hurt. That almost hurt a lot. Can we activate it? Is there enough power in this system to maybe activate it? Yes, there is. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, activate that bad boy. So let's hope the wind keeps blowing while that activates, but I want to show you something. You're gonna find these crates all over the planet. Okay, these can be transported by train and they can be turned into scrap. Oh, yep, the wind died down. But at some point, yep, the wind died down, so. Yep, there it goes, now the wind's blowing. 
The wind's got to stay consistent. Let's see if it can blow long enough for this thing to activate. But these crates, they can be shredded. But they're also part of another mission that we have to do. But we're not there yet. It's not asking us to do it. I don't see a sight pylon here. Okay, come on, one more. Keep going, keep going. Okay, let's see where we are. Okay, so we are at Equator 3 again. Okay, got it. Not a problem. So again, this one's got six gates that need to be unlocked. We've unlocked one. We've got five more plus the core. So anyway, there we are. And like I said, these freight modules can be recycled into scrap. And let's enter this. Oh, the compass, right. Okay, see these? These are sight pylons. These tell us where we can find them. So now we know where to go to find a sight pylon to connect to, but just to show you, we can take these containers and we can put them right there. Now I know we're going to be needing to use them later for scrap or for a mission, so we shouldn't just up and destroy them right now. Uh, anyway, let's see if we can find one of those sight pylons. If we go to R, I think... Yeah, we're, we've got about a quarter of our unlimited oxygen left, if that makes sense. Okay, let's... Or... No, we ran out. We are done. We are done, okay. Let's grab that oxygen container. And let's go for a walk. I think this is the closest sight pylon, so we'll go this way. See what we can find. Yep, see it? I see it. Excellent, okay. And there's lots of these crates around that we can pick up, so what we should do, set this up. And we'll use a rail junction to help redirect us in this direction. Yeah, I think a rail junction will work. Do we have any with us? I don't I don't think we actually have the materials with us to make this happen in this episode, unfortunately. What do we have in our little pioneer pack here? Um, we got O2. And we've got rail junction bundle. Okay, well, we could set up a rail junction. Set it up like that. With one rail that heads that way. And the rest of the rails will head... Let's see, if we hit F, or hit R, where's... Oh yeah, excellent. Okay, so there is a... There is a gate in that direction. And there are pylons in that direction. So therefore, we've set that up properly. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do... I'm actually going to... Put these things over here. Take the train closer to the rocket. Load the rocket up, and then I'm gonna go home. But I think that's gonna do it for this episode. I think this is gonna end up editing to a shorter episode, I think. Um, the deal with um, misunderstanding exactly what I was doing wrong with the uh, terrarium uh, really ate a bunch of time. That was dumb. I mean, I was doing everything I was supposed to do, but only for the terrarium on DeSolo, not, or, yeah, Des DeSolo, not, uh, not Kalidor. Kalidor had its own set. It was, I was just looking at the wrong set. But anyway, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. Um, that shredder stopped for some reason. Maybe it's because I disconnected the power. I don't know, but... Oh, it's probably full of scrap that needs to be uh, taken. That's what it is, because each of those containers makes like four units of scrap. But anyway, um, if you have any questions, comments, leave them in the uh, leave them in the comments. And if you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all the usual jazz. 
and uh, I really appreciate any input and hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am. I'm loving it. A lot to learn and a lot of stuff I want to try and hopefully I can spur some thoughts and ideas in you as well. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.